Howdy YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Gunman. So today we've got a review and demonstration on the latest from Devilbus and that is the DV1 Old School Edition. So we're going to get straight into it, unbox it, have a look at what you get inside the box, take it in the booth and smash some clear coat down. So I've got the clear coat edition here but you can get this in clear coat and base coat. So they have recently released two of these uh, limited edition spray guns. So you've got the old school and the new school. This is the old school. I guess it's designed to look like that vigilante. And if you hang around to the very end, I actually still have one of those vigilantes and I still have one of the nebulas. So uh, the other limited edition I do not have. That is the new school. And I believe that's kind of, you know, a paying homage at the very least to the nebula. Same thing with this. Like it's not a identical copy to the uh, Vigilante, but you can tell that it's at, at the very least taken some inspiration from it. Um, but yeah, this is what they call the old school gun. Like I say, you can get it in pretty much all available uh, setups uh, that the DV-1 is available in. You can get it in the base coat gun, the clear coat gun, all different combination of air caps and fluid tips. One thing I did notice is that they're all non-digital. So that doesn't really bother me. I personally don't mind throwing a gauge on the bottom of my spray gun. But if that is a deal breaker for you, it is worth keeping in mind. I do know some people don't like the old analog gauges. They're sort of uh, a bit, you know, add a bit of extra size and you know, not so much weight, but yeah, a bit of extra size to the spray gun. To me, it doesn't really bother me what's going on down there. Um, but I did actually also notice that you can buy a digital gauge that you can just put on yourself, but you're talking about 300 plus dollars. So that's potentially, I was thinking when I was uh, looking up and doing some research for this video, potentially why they didn't go with the digital because um, that would just increase the cost. So potentially trying to just uh, keep the cost down for people. Um, but yeah, on that point, the gun itself is about $925, which is the same as a digital DV-1. So basically you're taking the trade off for the non-digital, but you get the awesome limited edition. At the end of the day, that's gonna have to be something that you decide. Um, but yeah, the way the gun performs, I can't really fault it. I do quite like the DV-1s, but there's always been something about it that um, I, I could never like quite put my finger on what it is about the DV-1 clear coat guns. Like they're more than competent and they're more than uh, capable of doing like a really good job, but I don't know exactly what it is. I just, it's probably not my favorite clear gun. That's what I would have to say, but they're more than competent. Like um, in uh, last year, I was using the DV-1 clear gun with a 1.2 and a C2. However, this one here is the C1 with a 1.2. So the clear coats that I'm using is a 105 and it does like to go on. Um, it, well, it can run, like it's really easy to overload it. So that's why I'm deliberately trying to restrict it. And the C1 has a fine atomization on it and that's why I do prefer the C1 with the clear coats that I'm using. However, for most people, I would recommend the C2. It just gets a little bit more um, fluid on and yeah, it'll be a bit faster for your normal clear coats. But like I say for me, like if you're going for sort of like dead flat glassy finishes, minimal material, uh, like a fine orange peel, then yeah, hey, go for the C1. You, you might find that you prefer the C1 as well. But I would say for most people, uh, C2 in a smash environment, smash shop environment would be the way to go. Um, and you could go with the 1.2, like I said, or the 1.3. I'd, I'd say the C2, like I say, would be the best for most people. Um, but as far as the base coat gun goes, same thing. I would nearly uh, prefer one of these in a base coat gun than a clear coat gun because as far as the DV-1 goes for a base coat gun, I think it's the best on the market. I honestly believe that the DV-1 base coat gun, 1.3 with a B plus air cap, is the best base coat gun on the market. It's got a massive fan on it. The build quality is impeccable. Same thing with the DV-1 clear gun. Obviously, it's, it's basically the same gun with a, a different air cap on it. That's basically all it really is. But um, yeah, best gun on the market for base coat. So uh, yes, they are creeping up in price a bit. I think that's actually part of the reason that I was a little bit sour on the DV-1s when they came out. After seeing the price, they did take a bit of a hike, but at the end of the day, the, the quality is improved. So, um, And at the end of the day, they're also still cheaper than Sardis and your flagship iWatters. So, you know, they're still, of the big three, 
uh, they still are the more um, cost-effective version. But um, yeah, for me, coming off the pro lights, being around the sort of five to six hundred dollar mark, when the DV ones came out, they're about seven seven hundred and fifty dollars. So yeah, even nine hundred dollars if you go for the digital. And again, like I say these limited editions, which they've finally got good limited editions because what they were having previously, they were just, oh, they were pretty embarrassing. Sorry to build this, like I've been a big fan of you guys for years, but um, the designs that they had, like that circuit edition and the derbs, I think they call it dubs or derbs edition, like it's just a few squiggly lines on it. And I know why, because that's all they that they could do. Um, there is a bit of a story which I won't get into now, but. Um, yeah, years ago they had the best, they had the best limited editions um, and then they stopped them for a long time. But they're finally back so yeah, it just reminds me of the sort of 2016, 17, 18 type era when you had Devilba, Sada, Iwata, Segola all releasing awesome new designs and new guns were coming out left, right and centre and it was like a real good like healthy competition and then it just kind of died out. and. Even some of the stuff lately coming out from SADA, like they've got this Universe edition. Uh, Spray Guns Direct actually asked me if I wanted one, and I'm like, oh cool, it's gonna be like the Nebula. And it's just got barcodes over the side, and I'm like, what? You just missed out on like the opportunity to make the best limited edition ever. You know, like it could kind of be like the Nebula, but the Universe, you know, uh, it'd be black with stars and stuff all, all over it. And it's like, you're just putting these QR codes all over it and you're trying to point people towards some stupid app or something. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> Either way, let's just get back to these awesome spray guns like this one here. Yeah, out of the two recent guns that Tavilbus did release, I would say this is the better looking of the two. So this is the old school and then they've got the new school. Like I said at the start, new school is kind of trying to look like the Nebula. It's sort of similar colour theme than the Nebula, but I do reckon this is definitely the better looking of the two. That's my preference, but... Um, everybody will have their own personal preferences but yeah like I say look at the front and uh, and that little bit at the front where it overlaps it's actually quite neat um, yeah it's a very well done wrap put it that way um, and the DV1 in and of itself like I say uh, oozes of quality it's a very good build quality on it but you know look for some people I would not be surprised if the price is sort of creeping up there a little bit too much like yeah, $925 is creeping up there. Um, I'm not sure I would spend over $1,000 on a spray gun. I've got so many spray guns, not that I would ever need another one. But if I was in the market, that's what I always try to do. Uh, when I do a review and when I give recommendations, I try to put myself in the shoes of you being the purchaser and just lay out all the information and then I'll give you my recommendation whether or not I think it's worth it. I would want one of these um, because I'm a developer snut. You know, if you're a Sada and or you're a um, I want a guy, eh, you, you might not want it. But you know, I've always been a bit of a developer fan. They've always been my favourite spray guns. I would want one of these. Uh, the fact that it's getting up there in price, nine hundred and twenty-five dollars. I don't think it's too bad, really. So that is on SprayGunsDirect.co.uk. Uh, Again, I will actually be putting a link in the description. So if you guys do want one of these, be sure to head over to Spray Guns Direct and get yourself one of them. And if you do get any spray guns from Spray Guns Direct, just remember that if you let them know that I sent you, they'll send you a free uh, spray gun cleaning kit. So just send them an email, info at SprayGunsDirect.co.uk. Tell them Gunny sent you and that you'd like the free spray gun kit when you order whatever you're ordering. Um, anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd throw this footage of this uh, patrol bonnet in at the end. I actually ended up getting some strange uh, fisheye effect uh, some, uh, just around this section here. I think I might have to repaint it in the morning, but um, that is a side note. You can still see, um, yeah, disregard those fisheyes or uh, silicon spots. Um, you can still see, uh, showcase what the gun is capable of. Uh, three stage Pearl Patrol bonnet. I'm going to be painting the rest of this car tomorrow. But yes, definitely been having a lot of fun using this gun. It's a beautiful looking gun. Uh, it's definitely a good performing gun. But like I say, is it going to perform any better than something like, say, your A&I Skull Edition at probably half or less than half of the price with more air caps and more fluid tips? No, it's not going to perform any better than it, but it probably is a little bit better made than those ANIs. Like, I have had one or two ANIs go on me, 
Um, but yeah, so you do have some other options, um, you know, uh, that are a bit more cost effective. It's that they're not going to be for everybody. Limited editions are not going to be for everybody. But yeah, the settings that I've been using is full fan and then come in a quarter of a turn. So open the fan right up, then come in quarter of a turn. I don't know why I just do it. Um, and then full fluid. And uh, well, I've been running it at sort of like 38 PSI for my first coat of clear and around 32 PSI for my second coat of clear. But again, that will definitely change depending on the clear that you're using. I'm using a very different clear than normal clears. So yeah, you'll probably want to use just your standard two bar, or maybe just a touch above pressure. Um, yeah, full fan, full fluid. But again, yeah, you know, adjust as required but there you go that's the um new one versus the old one personally i think the old one does look a little bit better don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up until next time get out there and paint some shit coming out